Section 4.1 of James Stewart's Calculus deals with maximum and minimum values. The previous chapter is about uh, finding the derivatives, um, differential calculus as it were, um, finding the derivatives of equations. And so in uh, chapter 4, Stewart goes on to um, explore some of the applications of the differential calculus. So the beginning of the chapter deals with the first topic, maximum and minimum values of equations. So what is an absolute maximum value? Well the absolute maximum of an equation is that point say C, x equals C, where um, the the value, the y value, the f of C is going to end up being greater than or equal to all the other f of x's that you could pl uh, plug in. So this is the the highest uh, y value that you would get for any x. And we call this, you know, the, the x equals c, the, the place c on that, uh, the graph of that equation, where you're going to get the highest value that's either going to be greater than or ne than equal to all the other points on that um, equation. So an absolute minimum, absolute means m more than anywhere else, period. The absolute minimum is going to be exactly the opposite. It's going to be the point uh, where x equals c, uh, where y, or f of c, is going to be less than or equal than all the other y's, than all the other uh, f of x's. So that's what an absolute maximum is, and that's what an absolute minimum is. To put it in ordinary language, the absolute if you were to graph an equation, an absolute maximum is going to be the highest y point of that graph, and then the absolute minimum is going to be the lowest y on that graph. So that's what absolute means, highest. Now, uh, there we can also speak of local maxima and local minima also. And that's where we're not talking about the whole equation, but we're talking about a certain part of the equation, a certain segment of the equation. And so there we're talking about a local maximum or a local minimum. That, that means that when, when all the x's that are near x equals c, all the x's that are near x equals c, that's a local area. And within a local area, uh, an interval, within a closed interval, say, of the equation, uh, then you might have a low point. Uh, you might have several low points. You might have several high points. Um, it may not be the absolute high point, or the absolute low point of the whole equation, but it's local, a localized maximum uh, or minimum, a peak or a trough, as it were, uh, at a particular in a particular segment of the function. Okay, what is the extreme value theorem? The extreme value theorem is going to deal with this this local situation, um, and it's going to say that if a function is continuous on a closed interval a to b. Uh, so on a particular segment from x equals a to x equals b, um, it has to be continuous. That means at every point of that, there is a at every at every point between a and b, there is uh, a a continuous point p p of the of the of the equation. Um, it, there's no place where there's not a point, uh, or there's no place where there's two points. It's a continuous connected uh, interval. Closed means that we're we're not we're not going just up we're not starting just after a and going to right before b um, the way that would be written would be with parentheses instead of brackets uh, we're talking a closed interval where both both x equals a and x equals b are part of the interval we're considering so if if we're talking about a a continuous function within a certain closed interval, then there is going to be an absolute maximum value somewhere in there, and there's going to be an absolute minimum value somewhere in there. Um, now, of course, if it's a straight line that's flat, uh, then every point is the maximum and the minimum. Uh, but in general, uh, uh, if, if so even if it's just a line, there's going to be a maximum and minimum. It's going to be the same, and it's going to be at every point. But in general, uh, if it's continuous, and if it's a closed interval, 
somewhere in there is going to be a maximum and somewhere in there there's going to be a minimum an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum in that closed interval that's called the extreme value theorem now uh, Pierre de Fermat uh, a French uh, person a mathematician who lived in the 1600s one of the developers of analytic uh, geometry analytic geometry is basically the the uh, XY kind of frameworks the cart it's also uh, more fundamentally perhaps founded by Descartes although Fermat uh, was working on some of the same uh, ideas before Descartes uh, but Descartes uh, uh, is the one that usually gets the credit for inventing analytical geometry um, and um, analytic geometry and for coming up with the XY coordinate frame it's called the Cartesian coordinate system after Descartes uh, but uh, Fermat was a little bit before Descartes um, and he uh, did a lot of work also with this sort of thing um, and here is Fermat's theorem as it relates to maximums and uh, maxima and minima if a function has a local maximum or minimum at C and if the um, the derivative function exists at C then the the, the y value of the derivative fu function at c is going to be zero. What is Fermat saying here? Well, this, uh, by the way, Fermat was before calculus, so I'm sure this has been um, reworded uh, into calculus speak. Basically, what Fermat is saying is he's saying that if there is a maximum or a minimum, then the slope of the tangent to the function at that point is going to be zero. This makes sense, even though it may not be worded in a way that, that seems like it's easy. It is very easy. Simply saying that if, if, a, if a function hits a maximum, you know, in other words, it goes up and then it starts coming down, if you, if you draw a tangent to the equation where it hits that maximum point, the tangent is going to be a straight uh, f flat line. It's going to be a horizontal line the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Same thing with a minimum. If a function goes down and then comes back up, the, the tangent to that minimum point is going to be a horizontal line whose slope, therefore, is zero. And so even though Fermat was before, uh, before Newton invented the calculus, or Leibniz, depending on who you go with, um, even though Fermat was before, he recognized that the, the slope of any function at its maximum or minimum is going to be zero. And that's what this theorem is saying in more uh, calculus language. That if there is a local maximum or minimum at a particular point x equals where x equals c, if the, if the derivative function exists, which basically is, is uh, in calculus as, as we've seen in the previous chapter 3, um, if the derivative function exists, which is is a graph of all the slopes of the first function. Um, if it exists at that point where x equals c, then the slope is going to be it's going to be zero there. Um, the, the, or that is the the y value of the derivative function at that point x equals c is going to be zero. Again, that's it's very simple what it's saying that the slope of the tangent to a function at a maximum or minimum is going to be zero. Okay, so what is a critical number? Well, critical number uh, is a number in the domain of a function such that the slope of the tangent equals zero or does not exist. So this is basically what, what Fermat's uh, theorem is telling us. Uh, we're looking for the numbers x equals c where um, that slope is zero because that's going to be at least a local maximum or minimum. It could be an absolute too, but, but we know that if the um, if the slope is zero uh, at a at the derivative on a derivative function, then that is a place where you're at a at least a local maximum or minimum for the original uh, function you took the derivative of. So um, basically, the derivative of x equals c um, is going to be uh, at, uh, is going to be zero on the on the derivative equation. Uh, or if it doesn't exist, that could also be a a local maximum uh, or minimum such as where there's an asymptote or something like that okay so 
um, if so if a function has a local maximum or minimum at C then C will also be a critical number C will be a place where the um, uh, y the the function of x at that number is going to be C in the derivative function okay I don't know if I said that well but again this basically amounts to there there will be numbers x equals c where the slope of the derivative is zero and that's going to be a at least a local maximum or a local minimum okay so how are we going to find the maximum and minimum what's the what's a method for finding a maximum the the absolute maximum or minimum on a closed interval how are we going to do it we have a let's say we've got we've got a function we've got a closed interval of that function and maybe we have several maxima or we have several minima how are we going to find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum on that closed interval well here's the closed interval method so to find the absolute maximum and minimum of a function on a closed interval from a to b first we're going to find the values of the function at the critical numbers in that interval and I'm going to do an example on the final slide here this basically amounts to taking you basically you take the equation you do uh, you do the derivative of it um, and then you solve for the derivative equals zero and that will give you the critical uh, critical numbers okay also look at the endpoints because the endpoints may not be uh, a turning point in the equation but they might be on their way up or on their way down so the endpoints of that interval could also be turn out to be the absolute maximum or minimum on that that interval and so basically the the absolute is going to be whichever the larger number is of one and two whichever the larger uh, it, maybe it's a critical number or maybe it's an endpoint but the larger of, of one and two is going to be the absolute maximum on that interval for that function uh, and the smallest of one and two it's going to be the absolute minimum value on that interval. Now if this sounds very abstract, let's go ahead and do uh, number 45 in the exercises on page uh, 212. Basically here we're, we are given the, a function 3x squared minus 12x plus 5, that's the the function we're working with, and the interval we are given in the problem is the closed interval from 0 to 3. So it's closed interval and includes 0 and it includes 3. Okay, well let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, work with the method here. First we're going to find the critical values for this equation. How are you going to find the critical values? Well we're going to take the derivative of this which is fairly easy so uh, the derivative uh, of 3x squared is going to be 6x you just uh, multiply the exponent by the coefficient and you get 6 then downgrade the power of the of the x1 and you so x squared goes to x that's a straightforward finding a derivative of 3x squared Okay, same thing with the next one. The derivative of minus 12x is going to simply be minus 12. You multiply the exponent of the x, 1, times the negative 12, and then downgrade uh, the x1 power. 1 goes to 0. Um, x to the first goes to x to the 0. x to the 0 is just 1. Uh, you know, so we're left with minus 12. And the derivative of any num number like 5 is simply 0. So the derivative of the equation, 3x squared minus 12x plus 5, is uh, 6x minus 12. So to find the critical values we need to find out where this derivative equation, this first order equation, um, we need to find out where it's 0. So 6x minus 12 equals x equals 0, that's easy. Solve for it, x equals 2. Uh, so that's that's where, so at x equals 2 in the der derived equation, in the, der in the derivative, um, uh, we, we know that x equals 2 is where the slope is 0. Um, so we then take the 2 and plug it back into the first equation. So uh, 3 times 2 to the second power, that's 3 times 4, that's 12. Uh, minus 12 times 2, that's 12 minus 24, which is minus 12. And then minus 12 plus 5, that's going to be minus 7. Uh, so basically we know that when x equals 2, y equals minus 7, and that is the um, the uh, local minimum in on that interval. 
Okay, so we've got one piece of data. Next, what are the endpoint values? This is simple. We're simply going to plug in x equals 0 and x equals 3 into the first equation. x equals 0 is extraordinarily easy because the x squared will disappear and the 12x will disappear and we're left with 5. Uh, the 3 uh, is a little bit more difficult. Um, uh, 3 times 3 squared, that's going to be 3 times 9, that's 27. Minus 12 times 3, that's minus 36, so 27 minus 36 uh, is minus uh, 8, I think. Uh, and then plus 5 is going to be minus 3. Okay, I'm off 1, minus 4. Uh, so um, uh, so now we, we can say, well, what are the absolute maximum and what is the absolute minimum? Well, we have, we have three numbers. We have min x equals, min we have uh, y equals, um, um, I'm sorry, it's not x equals 5, it's y equals 5 y equals negative 4, so sorry. Um, so we have y equals negative 7, we have y equals 5, and we have y equals 4. What is the absolute maximum? Well, the absolute maximum is going to be when y equals 5, or when f of 0 equals 5. So when the function equals 5, in other words. Uh, so that's the, the absolute maximum on this interval. Uh, minus 7 is going to be the absolute uh, minimum, and that happened when x equals 2, and therefore y equals minus 7. So um, sorry for my, my faulty writing. It should be f of x equals 5 and f of x equals 4, um, or y equals 5, y equals 4. So you see how this works? It's very pretty straightforward. Uh, to recap what we've done in this section, this section has been about finding the uh, local and absolute uh, maxima and minima uh, on a particular um, function. And we can now use calculus to find the derivative of an equation that's going to tell us where the slope is zero, which is where it's turning, uh, either at a maximum or a minimum. Um, and then uh, we simply can uh, plug them in to find out uh, uh, which one it is. Uh, is it a maximum or is it a minimum?